going once, going twice, sold. It's 89 degrees. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. If you watch part one of making the Aztec calendar, you would have seen me engrave this here. It's a test piece to check the angle of my V-bit. After I checked it, I found it was only 89 degrees and not 90 as it was originally sold to me as. Now you have to bear in mind, these are designed to go into handheld routers just to make some grooves in it. They don't need to be absolutely precise. However, if you're going to use them for V-carving, they do have to be correct. Otherwise, the V-carve will not look correct. By doing that simple test, you can actually make sure the angle of the cutter is what you think it is, and if it isn't, it's not a problem. Simply enter the new value into VCarve Pro and just set. After that, all your VCarves will be correct when you use that particular cutter. Now one of the problems is I didn't explain properly how this process is meant to work and it's led to a bit of confusion so I'm going to be addressing that in this particular episode so that you can go out test your cutters and make sure you have the correct values to enter into VCarve Pro for when you want to do your VCarving. I'll also be providing files at the end of this for 90 degree, 60 degree and 45 degree cutters. For those of you who don't have the latest version of VCarve Pro or Aspire and cannot open my VCarve files, I'll also be providing them in DXF format and by simply following the steps that I did, you will be able to recreate the file for your particular version of VCarve Pro or Aspire. So without further ado, let's have a look at how it works. I'll put a piece of scrap MDF onto the tabletop, three quarters of an inch thick or 18 millimeters. I'll put the 90 degree V-bit into the collet here and I've zeroed it to the surface of the material. It's now time to run the test file. So here is the 90 degree V-bit testing file I downloaded from my website. The first thing you need to realize is all these triangles here are identical. There is nothing magic about the triangles or the text. The text above each triangle simply represents what angled V-bit cutter we're going to use to cut the triangle. In this particular instance, this one will be cut with a 90 degree V-bit. This one will be cut with an 86 degree V-bit. Now if you downloaded the VCARV file that I've put on my website, then it comes equipped with 11 separate toolpaths already configured for you. So long as you're using a 90 degree V-bit with a diameter of half an inch or more, then all you have to do is simply click Save Toolpath, click on here, Toolpath List to select all the different toolpaths, and go to here where you will select either Mac 3 Auto Tool Change Arcs Millimeter or Mac 3 Auto Tool Change Arc Inch if your machine is set up for Imperial. You can use this particular format for both Mac 3 and UC CNC machines. Of course if you have a different machine then simply select the one that's right for you. Once you've selected your post process just go Save Toolpaths and then Save the Text. File. So let's have a look at how these toolpaths are set up. I'm going to select the 85 degree one. And as you can see when I've gone on there, it's already selecting the digits 85 and the triangle directly under it. So if we go into the tool itself, we can see we're machining this with an 85 degree cutter. 
Now it's set up for a cutter with a diameter of 12.7 millimeters. That's half an inch in the imperial measurement. And it has a pass depth of 6 millimeters. That's approximately just under a quarter of an inch. I've called it tool number 85. And you can see I called the tool path 85 degrees. So how do we get on if the cutter we want to test is not a half inch bit, but say a quarter inch? Well, we now need to go through and alter all 11 of these tool paths to reflect the diameter of our cutter. I'm going to open up the 85 degree tool path. And again, it's showing us that I've selected the 85 degree part of this drawing. And I go up here to the V bit and go edit. Now, I could simply change this here to 6.35, or which is exactly a quarter of an inch. 12.7 millimeters is exactly half an inch. Or I can come here and I can just change this to inches and put 0 0.25 for a quarter of an inch. And I'll show you what happens if I go OK. And it says here the tool data is invalid. The depth of pass, I can't do a 6 inch cut in a single pass with a quarter inch V-bit. And it shows me that the most I can do is 0.136 of an inch. I'm going to make it 0 0.125 of an inch or 1 eighth. Go calculate and there you have it. This here will now be cut using a cutter with a diameter of a quarter of an inch. I can likewise go to the 86 degree toolpath, go edit, change that to inches, enter 0 0.25 for the diameter of my cutter, change the depth of pass to 0 0.125 or 1 eighth of an inch, go OK and calculate. And that's two of them done. What I have to do is do the same for the rest of these tool paths. So what happens if my cutter is larger than a half inch? If it's a one inch cutter for instance, which would be 25.4 millimeters. Well, the answer is nothing. So long as the cutter is larger than the tool designated here, so long as its diameter is larger, I should say, then you don't need to change it. A one inch diameter cutter will easily cut a tool path designed for a half inch V-bit, but it doesn't work the other way around. So if your cutter is half inch or larger, you don't need to change this. If it's smaller, then you need to go here and change its diameter and the depth of pass. And you need to do that for all of these individual toolpaths. So if you're really lucky, you'll be able to open my VCAV files that I've provided. But if your version of VCAV Pro or Aspire is older than mine, then unfortunately you will have to recreate them using the DXF files provided. I'm now going to show you a quick and easy way of creating the toolpaths you need for your test file. So the first step in creating our file is we need to open our DXF file. I'm going to pick on the 60 degree tester. And as you can see, we have an offset. I'm just going to get rid of that. And we need to first figure out whether this is a metric or imperial. And we can see it's 56 inches by 119. And no one in their right mind would make it that big. It must be in millimetres. So I'm going to set millimetres here and just go OK. Now I'm going to go back into set job dimensions and I'm going to change it to inches. That's brought us to 14 inches by almost four and a half inch, about four and a half inches. The original size of this was actually 15 inches by six. And the thickness of the material is zero 0.75. Go OK. And I'm just going to select all that by going Control A 
and align objects to the center. And that looks about right. We're now ready to create some tool paths. Of course, if you'd like to make this a bit smaller, there's nothing wrong with doing that, especially if you're using smaller cutters. If you're using 3mm cutters, I'd definitely shrink this. But I think if I was using a quarter or half inch bit or larger, I'd tend to leave it as it is. So I'm going to just click here, switch to Toolpaths tab, and I'm going to start by creating our first toolpath. I'll come over here to VCarve, and I'm going to select the 60 degree one, and I'm going to come into here and go Edit, and I'm going to create a tool that is 60 degrees in diameter, or in angle. I'm going to have a diameter of a half inch, I'm going to set my pass depth to 0 0.3 and I'm going to give it a tool number of 60. We need to go OK. And down here, I'm just going to go 60 degrees. And go calculate. And there we have it, our first tool path created with a half inch bit. So now we can move on to our next one. We'll just select this here, go V carve, and it always shows us the last V bit we were using. The great thing is you don't need to come in here and create a V bit for every angle. All you have to do is just edit the previous one. So this one's going to be 61 degrees. I'll leave all the other the half inch diameter, the 0.3 of an inch pass depth, but I do need to change the tool number. You can't have two tool numbers that are the same. So I'll just go OK, and we'll call this 61 degrees. And to make this even easier, I'm just going to copy the word degrees, and calculate. So our third one, we've got 62. Create this here. It's going to be called 62 degrees. Edit our cutter to 62. Our tool number to 62. And of course, depending on your machine, you'll need to might need to change the feed rate, or the plunge rate, or the spindle speed. So you'll only need to change this for the first one and copy it through for the rest of them. So we'll just go OK, and there we have it. It's just a matter of going through and doing this for each of them. It's somewhat laborious, but it won't take long to do it all. Once you get a bit of a rhythm going, it's quite easy. Select your drawing part, go VCarve, Edit, the angle of the cutter, 55, tool number, 55, go OK, come down here, go 55, and because I go Control V, because I've already copy and paste the word degrees. Now that's just taken over seven minutes to do the entire drawing. That's from start to finish. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long once you get into the swing of things. I'll just go Save Toolpath, and if there's any error, if we can see here all our cutter angles are correct. There's no double up, all our tool numbers are different, doesn't matter whether they match, but it makes sense that they match. All our names here are different, so that's good. We can now simply save our toolpath and we're away and laughing. Now this isn't very easy to see on the video but when you're looking at this close up you can see that these ones here, the 95, these edges curve in like this here and same with the 94, 93 and the curve inwards is getting less pronounced as uh, we get closer 
to the 90 degrees here. Now, on the 85, 86, 87, the problem is the opposite. These lines curve outwards, and uh, it gets less pronounced the closer we get to 90 degrees. Now, when I have a close look at them, the 90 still has a slight inward curve. I can't see any on the 89 here. And the 88 looks pretty good as well. I'm not really sort of seeing it there, maybe just slightly. So you need to choose the cutter at the angle that gives you the best result on this triangle and on the lettering as well, though the lettering doesn't really show any issues. It's, it's really these triangles that really show up the issue. So in my case, my cutter is an 89 degree cutter rather than a 90. Now one thing you're going to notice is because you have 11 separate tool paths with 11 separate tools, it's going to stop 11 times and ask you to change the cutter. Of course, we're just using the same cutter, so we don't need to change anything, but we will need to push this cycle start to move on to the next cut. It's very character building, a bit like eating your sprouts. Of course, there is another way around it. You can go into UCCNC or Mac 3 and just set it to ignore tool change command. If you do do that though, please remember to change it back or the next project you do will be absolutely ruined. Now a big thank you goes out to Paul Z. He was the one who originally brought this technique to my attention some 10 years ago on the Vetric website. I'll put a link on my website to where you can find the original thread that highlights how to do this technique. Big thank you, Paul. Really appreciate it. You've improved my V-carving no end. Well, that about wraps it up. Hopefully, you've now got a better grasp on how this technique works. And if you have to, you'll be able to recreate the files so that you can cut and test your V-bits. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and do check out my website, www cncnuts.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. Cheers.